speaking on green business, zero carbon capitalism. I'd like to ask you a question. How did it taste? That credit card you ate last week. It may not have had flavor, but according to the Plastic Pollution Coalition, the average American eats one credit card size worth of plastic each week. Microplastic can be found in our food, air, water, and soil. And plastic never disintegrates. It actually takes about a thousand years for it to turn into tiny particles. But like most capitalists, I love what it can do for business and find it hard to live life without it because I was born a hustler. I worked with my mother at the age of five, roaming the African marketplace at Dorsey High, teaching these kids how to survive, selling drinks, selling donuts, selling pogs, selling it all. Crenshaw made me, but Westwood raised me. Went to a predominantly white middle school. Yep, that charity case, but never felt out of place. My friends' homes were the size of castles. I got to see how others live. They didn't care how they dressed or if they made a mess, which gave me the confidence to be free, 100% me. But it's that Crenshaw culture, it's that soul, it's that I just feel like I'm at home, speaking slang, watching my friends do their thing in a city where every ethnicity resides. Yet yeah, it's nothing like that black melanin in me. Fast forward to high school, predominantly black next to the city of Inglewood, where parents would spend their whole paychecks on stuff just to make it seem like they're better than us. But stuff doesn't make us. The intent of use does. So I learned how to sell things better by obtaining advanced degrees and working in every area of consumer packaged goods supply chain. I led massive waste reduction projects and saw inventory and waste negligence from ingredients, toxic chemical use, packaging. And this is when I saw that Mother Nature, the habitat for all species, is under attack. So where does 300 million tons of plastic go every year? Well, plastic is a derivative of fossil fuel. Fossil fuel, one of the most efficient and versatile substances can be tasteless, odorless, colorless. That's why it's called liquid gold. And when processed, it emits greenhouse gases that pollute the air, water, and soil. And did you know that 60% of fossil fuel is actually used for consumer goods? It's found in all sorts of unsuspecting things like cleaning solutions of all kind, makeup, preservatives, packaging, fragrance in our home and body products, flavoring. I mean, we're literally covered in it. <sighs> we're literally covered in it. And there are over 60,000 endocrine disrupting chemicals on the market that are not being regulated by the government. But shout out to California Governor Newsom for holding a popular candy company responsible for putting titanium dioxide as an ingredient in one of their candies. Turns out we've been tasting more than just the rainbow. <laughs> this is just one example of millions of questionable products that have been on the market. So how does this affect us? Well, in the United Kingdom this summer, they experienced an unprecedented heat wave that scientists confirmed is due to human activity. This is directly related to greenhouse gas emissions. Let me explain. When greenhouse gases, such as nitrous oxide and methane, are trapped at the top of the ozone layer, the ozone layer begins to deteriorate, exposing stronger sun rays. Those sun rays are then melting the Antarctic ice caps. Remember, planet Earth is three-fourths ice and water. So when the ice melts, the sea levels rise. Warmer weather mixed with toxic chemicals dumped into large waterways triggers the overproduction of rising hot water vapor. That hot water vapor is then creating new cloud formations and precipitation, rain. 
Those new cloud formations are disrupting the way in which our historic weather patterns are flowing, drastically changing the climate in most regions. We're seeing it play out right before our eyes, from the flash floods in St. Louis to the blizzards in New York, Texas freezing over twice in the same season. And ever since I started writing this speech about four months ago, parts of Florida have been devastated with 15 feet of water. And California experienced one of the most severe heat waves and droughts. In 2021, natural disasters totaled $145 billion in economic damage the third costliest year in American history. And according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, if we do not keep the global temperature below 1.5 degrees Celsius by year 2030, tragedy will touch every country and over 216 million people will have to evacuate the place that they call home by year 2050. I couldn't help but to think, what if we use that $145 billion towards green business innovation instead of disaster cleanup? I mean, can you imagine if every developed country had to spend $145 billion every single year just to fix the infrastructure that they currently have when this can be prevented? Sounds like a waste of money to me. When you get home, I want you guys to do me a favor, okay? I want you to find the biggest rock and then throw it in the window. Then take a chainsaw, shred your couch, shred your curtain, shred your bed, and then put lighter fluid over everything and set it on fire. You may be thinking, Naleev, if I set my house on fire, I won't have anywhere to live. Well, that's exactly what we're doing to the environment. Humans are the problem. The average American generates over 1,600 pounds of trash each year. If city sanitation didn't exist, we'd all qualify to be on that show hoarders. But seriously, there are islands of trash in the middle of the ocean. And the human species has been on this planet a nanosecond compared to the lifespan of planet Earth. And yet we can completely destroy our environment within the next 100 years because of greed. If everything around us has changed in the last century, why do we think consumerism shouldn't? Well, that is why this is a really exciting time in history, because we're seeing a shift in consciousness, which is an opportunity for green business innovation to replace the toxic habits that no longer serve us. The future of green business depends on corporations creating a way for conscious consumers to make zero carbon purchases. Conscious consumers are people who are aware of how their purchases affect the environment, society, and the human species. And a zero carbon purchase is defined as a way for consumers to maximize the use of an item, then have a way to responsibly discard it when done. And not just the item, but the means of transportation and the packaging. And the great news is that there are already innovative startup companies that are creating ways for businesses to keep their waste circular. For example, Ambercycle. They take end-of-life textiles and turn it into new yarn for apparel manufacturers. Novaloop. They take plastic waste and turn it into new quality chemicals and materials. Silver Effect, they give their customers a huge discount for returning the used item so that it's recycled properly. Looks for Lease, a wardrobe rental company that offers multifunctional garments made out of recycled textiles and dead stock inventory. These are just a handful of entrepreneurs who saw the problem and decided to do something about it. We've seen throughout history how small changes that we make collectively can, have, can make a huge difference, like marching for justice and voting. So I decided to go all in and live one full day as a conscious consumer to just see if it's possible to achieve a zero carbon footprint. So I woke up, brushed my teeth with a reusable toothbrush and baking soda because my toothpaste had fluoride listed as an ingredient, which is a derivative of fossil fuel. 
I moisturized my skin with jojoba oil instead of lotion because it had fragrance listed as an ingredient. And then I put on a super cute multifunctional garment because if you wear the same garment more than 30 times, it significantly reduces its carbon footprint and you can save space in the closet. After getting dressed, I packed my breakfast in a glass jar and then I drove to work in an all-electric car. For lunch, I ate at my favorite restaurant that served food on glass plates and then I packed my leftovers in that same jar. Now this is when it started to get tricky because in the afternoon I was craving a sweet snack and the corner store only sold snacks sold in single-use plastic. I gave in and then on my way home I had to go to the grocery store and even though I brought three different types of bags for the bulk items, produce, and the groceries, at the end of the day I still use single-use plastic. As I reflect, but I put it in the proper recycling bin so that should count as a reduction towards my carbon footprint. As I reflect on how my consumption habits negatively affected the environment, as we should all be doing, what I learned is to stay prepared. Have some sort of reusable container, utensils, and a bag of some sort. I could totally see how if Rihanna wore a super cute purse with a built-in bowl and cutlery set, how it could actually turn into a trend to ditch single-use plastic. Innovative business solutions are birthed out of necessity. And we are in dire need of ways to replace the toxic habits that have become normalized. America is sick, and green business ensures that we partner with Mother Nature to make the health of the environment and the human species just as much a key performance indicator as profits. America can lead the global efforts to slow climate change by prioritizing an infrastructure where zero carbon purchases are even possible. Revenue will not be lost. It will actually exponentially exceed what our current infrastructure can generate. And the great news is, is Mother Nature has already, create, has already provided all of the materials that we need to make this happen. It's up to us to use our creativity. And for you entrepreneurs who are listening, green capitalism, the catechism to set us financially free. Reparations in a different form. Use your divine mind. Think out the norm. Build green to slow the storm because our people are the ones that are closest to the shore. I challenge you to practice conscious consumerism. You could uncover an idea worth millions and save our legacy because the alternative is not looking good. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.